<laughs> okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, radicals and simplifying radicals. I do say some kind of strange things when I talk about these because I talk about twins and being in jail. All right, um, this that's because this symbol means the square root. Okay, it's a radical sign, and if it's just sitting there like this, there's some understood things about them. What's the index? Well, if there's no number written here, it's cons it is a index of two. This is the radical sign. So what the reason that I talk about twins is because there are numbers that are perfect squares, and there is a list of them on that pink sheet. Uh, you may know four, two times two is four, three times three, nine, four times four, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64. These are all ones that you want to know. And 100, 121, and 144, and then it keeps going. So what you're looking for is things that are squared, okay? When they come out of jail, they get to start their new life with a new attitude, and they become different. They are, uh, they are not the same number anymore. Um, so the square root of x squared is x, okay? The square, the, so this one is saying, what's the opposite of the square root of 25? Well, I'm going to rewrite it just because I want you to understand that it's one of these numbers. This is 25 can be written as 5 squared. So this would be the square root of 5 squared is 5, then you apply the sign. So the answer to this one is negative 5. The other thing I want to point out is when you see this, it means to take the principal root. Principal root. It does not mean plus or minus. There aren't two answers to the principal root. There's just one. It's the positive root. If there is a negative sign in front of it, then you have will apply that after taking the principal root. So is 256 a perfect square number? Well, if you aren't sure, you grab your calc and you do second. Oh, it's already up there. Square root of 256, and it is 16. So that happens to be a perfect square, and you may not know that one by heart, so you use your calc. And that's, again, because 16 squared is 256, so the answer to this is 16. I do not plan on writing this every time, but there is a reason I'm doing that, because we are going to get to some problems where it's going to be variables. All right? This one is the opposite of the square root of 40,000, which is negative 200. And this one, 30 times 30 is 900, so that would be 30. All right, those are the easy ones. When I get through 5, 6, 7, and 8, I need to add before I evaluate. So I cannot take these square rooted separately. This would be the square root of 16, which is 4. Number six, you would you can break this one apart to the square root of four times the square root of nine, and I'll show you why. The square root of uh, four times nine is 36, and 36 is a perfect square. It's six. But notice that these, work, these would work too because they are perfect squares as well. The square root of four would be two, and the square root of nine is three. Two times three is six. Okay, this one. Um, we would just add and take the square root. I'm going to leave a few for you guys. Okay, so let's skip, please. Then number nine. Num and you, you may be ahead of me if you understand this. I get that. I'm trying to explain. So, um, so anyway, when you have a fraction that you're taking the square root of, you take the square root of the top and the bottom separately. You do not. I don't want you using a calculator right now unless the numbers get big. The square root of 16 is Four, the square root of 25 is 5. And your answer, if it's give, you give me a decimal, I'm just going to mark it wrong and ignore you. All right, do not. No decimals, okay? Square root of not, uh, 1. I do not want to see people leaving the square root of 1 in a problem. Evaluate it. Square root of 1 is 1. Okay, this would be 1 third. Okay, and I'll leave those two to you. So please skip to 13 through 17. We're going to simplify irrational roots. Irrational means numbers that behave badly. 
Okay, what it really means is not that. It really means they're non-terminating, non-repeating decimals. Okay, so if you type to the square root of 20 on your calc, you will not get anything but a decimal, and it will go on and on and on. You, that's not what I want. So this is what I'm talking about where you might have not had as much experience as someone else in the class, okay, is simplifying these. You have to take your list of perfect square numbers, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, etc., and look for one that divides evenly into the number underneath the radicant, uh, radical sign. This is the radicand. Any of those? Do, so I would not need to look much further than, well, 25 is too big, 16 is too big. What about 9? No. How about 4? Yes. So you break this down into the square root of 4 times 5. And you can separate those. I'm showing why this is how it's done. Square root of 4 times the square root of 5. I know the square root of 4 because 4 is a perfect square. It's a twin. So it gets to get out of jail. 5 can't come out of jail because he's not a twin. Not in the list. He isn't qualified to come out. So square root of 4 is 2. And so this answer would be 2 root 5. That is simplified radical form. I find that that sounds really kind of silly when you say simplified because certainly most students don't think of that as being simpler than pushing the button on the calculator. All right, but this is called simplified radical form. 28, any numbers in the list? So you go to your list if you're not good with your times tables and you have to play around. I look up to 25 since I, I want to find a, a number close to this and then go backwards, okay? The biggest one is 4. Again, so this is square root of 4 times 7. Breaking those two apart, you get square root of 4 times square root of 7. 2 comes out because he's a twin. Gets to come out of jail, start his new life as the number 2. And 7 is stuck in the radical. All right, 50. Now we got to get bigger. So I would come down my list to around 49 and go backwards and say 25. All right, so I'm going to separate. Uh, 50 into the square root of, bless you, 25 times 2. The square root of 25 is 5, and then you have 2 stuck in jail. I'm going to stop writing all these steps, okay? Do you get it? Since once I've gotten it down, I think we can do that. All right, eight, um, number 18, one number that divides into 18. All right, 9, break this to 9 times 2. Take the square root of 9, since it's a perfect square number, it comes out and starts its new life as it's 3. And 2 is stuck in the jail, the radical jail. All right, the next one, we've got 3 times the square root of 12. We're going to break the 12 into 4 times 3. We're factoring it into 4 times 3, because 4 is a factor. We bring out the square root of 4 is 2, and now he gets to hang out with the 3 out there. And what was the 3 doing? multiplying so we get to multiply who came out these get to hang out now they get to multiply uh, because they're both outside of jail so three times two is six six root three poor little three had to stay in there nine times the square root of 45 well 45 is nine times five i don't mean to make that look like a decimal i will bring th the square root of nine out which is three five is stuck in jail 9 times 3, 27 square roots of 5 would be your answer for number 18. Careful on 19, guys, and if you're, especially if you're going ahead. The largest number in the perfect square list, and it's not 4. Okay? It's very easy to make a mistake on that. And let me explain um, why. You could figure it out, though. So let's say you were thinking 4 times 8. What's in an 8? What number divides into 8 that's a perfect square? <laughs> 4. All right, so that's 4 times 4 times 2, right? Do you see what I'm talking about of being a twin? There's the twin. So he's coming out. Only one of them comes out, all right? That's because you're taking the square root of 16, which is 4. So this would be 24 times the square root of 2.
So you still can get it if you don't find the biggest one, as long as you pay attention to the other number and you realize there's one inside of that one too, or where there's a factor of that um, number that's also a perfect square. So if you started off with 16, you just would have done this a little faster than what I did. And you would have done 6 times 4 times square root of 2 and still get the same answer. What's the biggest one um, we can divide into 200? 100, right? Okay. So a 10 gets to come out, and we get 50 square roots of 2. All right. Like like terms, radicals must match in order to add the ones on the outside. So they have to be in this, they have to have the same thing in jail for them to be added. So since you have 5 square roots of 7 plus 2 square roots of 7, you have a total of 7 square roots of 7. Outside numbers get added. You do not change what's inside. It's just like doing 5x plus 2x is 7x. Okay? So, if the radicals match, you may add the numbers on the outside. So, this would be 9 root 3. You are allowed to subtract as well. Negative 2 root 2. Okay? Okay? This one, we've got to do some work on. I can't combine them right now because the radicals don't match. So I'm going to say, well, 75 can be broken down into 25 times 3. Now, what's the biggest perfect square that divides into 48? So if you're not sure, uh, this is what you would do. You'd go to your list. You'd say, well, 48, smaller than 49, it can't be that one. 25 won't divide into it either. How about 16? You might want to try those that look like they might, and it is 16. 48 divided by 16 is 3. Okay, it's not 4. You don't want to use 4. You want to do 16 times 3. So 5 comes out. I got 5 root 3 plus 4 times the square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 3 stays under. I got one more step. I got 5 root 3 plus 4 times 4 is 16 root 3. Now the radicals are matching. I can add the numbers on the outside. This would be 21 square root of 3, or 21 times the square root of 3. How are we doing? Maybe try one on your own, please, now. I'd like you to do 26, 27, 20, well, I'll just do 26 right now. Now, I don't write all these steps. Once you are good and proficient at this, you don't have to do as much work. You'll probably write the answers much faster. Okay, I think if you are understanding, you probably have it. Will you check your answer, please? Anybody have a problem with getting 7 root 3? Okay. What about number 27? Can I add these guys? Nope, might as well be 6 plus 4x. You can't do anything to number 27. This is already simplified, so that's what you write. Or you can rewrite it, showing me you know that it can't be done, anything, nothing can be done to it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Let me drink. All right, try 28. Get the oops. Okay, so I'm hoping you got you remember me telling you there was a factors of eighty that you might not remember? Sixteen times five. Okay. So this should have been two root five. Okay. 
Any questions about that one? No? Okay. I'm only going to do a couple of these. Um, if you square a square root, what happens? They are inverse operations. So like on your calculator, there's a button that says x squared, and above it there is the square root button. So when you square a square root, you get the number under the radical sign. Now look at, so this one's 21. That's how fast you would do those problems, okay? This is different. This is saying 2 times the square root of 5 squared. So you're squaring the square root of 5, which gives you 5, and then you're multiplying by 2 to get 10. What about this one? 2 times the square root of 7 squared. Well, we just talked about you have to be a double to be able to come out of jail. So that is 7 times 7. So this is 2 times 7, which is 14. And then 35, it's got the parentheses around differently. You have to be very careful about that one. I'll often see students forget to square the 5. It's getting squared too. So it's like doing 5 squared um, times 11, which is 25 times 11. And would you tell me what that is, please? 275? Thanks. Okay, next page. I'm going to show you a couple things here. When you multiply, you're, you can multiply anything, all right? But you got to multiply, well, just think about it this way. You got to be able to get to somebody to multiply with them. I know tacky, but these guys are outside the radical so they can hang out. So you multiply them. You can't multiply these time uh, th them. You can't multiply inside there by things on the outside because you didn't can't get in the jail, unless you're one of the guards or something. All right. So you don't have a visitor's pass. Four times three is twelve. And then we're going to multiply the ones in the jail because they can hang out together because they're all they're both in there. All right. So we got six times eight, which is forty-eight. Now we need to look at what we could do to simplify and see if we got any twins in there that can come out. So 48 breaks down to 16 times 3, which means we've got 12 times 4 square roots of 3, which is 48 square roots of 3. 48 times the square root of 3. <coughs> so multiplying, if they're both under radicals, you multiply the numbers underneath. All right, so we're going to do the square root of 50. And then we'll simplify it by doing breaking 50 down into factors of a perfect square and a non-perfect square. So it's going to be 5 times the square root of 2 when you're done. And now here's another thing that, again, if you had honors, you talked about this. I barely spoke about it in regular geo. And that's because we just don't make the kids do something that you had to do in honors sometimes. It's because... We don't want to throw any more difficulty levels sometimes into things, and now it's time to learn it, though. You don't want radicals in your basement because they might, they're dangerous, right? So you want to get them upstairs where you can see them. So you don't want them in your basement. So you want to get them out of the basement. And the way you get out, them out of the basement is by multiplying by them. <laughs> Because that gets rid of the radicals in the basement. There won't be radicals down there. There'll be something else. So you multiply top and bottom by the thing you don't want on the bottom. The square root of 2. All right. So I'll, 3 times the square root of 2 will be on top. Now he's upstairs. And we can keep our eye on him. The square root of 2 times square root of 2 would be 4. Square root of 4, which is... Two. So whenever you multiply matching roots, you get to get rid of the radical. That looks horrible, but it's better. So no radicals in the basement. Okay, that's the way it's got to be. No calculator can, is going to help you with that problem. Okay, so this one is the square root of 5 over the square root of 7. We would need to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 7. That gives us the square root of 35 on top. And on the bottom, 7. Okay. 
-hmm. That's it. Next. Let's not, I'm not going to do all of these, but I will jump, I'm going to leave some for you. Let's go to 41, please. Now, you could say, okay, well, the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 50 can be broken down to 25 times 2. And then you'd have in the bottom, square root of 25 is 5, and then it's 2 stuck in jail. Now, if I did that, I can just multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2. So this is one way to do the problem. Um, I'll tell you there's another. Square root of 2 over 5 times square root of 2 times square root of 2 would be 2. So 5 times 2 is 10. Okay. Well, you might be saying, well, why didn't you multiply by the square root of 50? Well, I can. I didn't want to because I just felt like simplifying it first. But look, it would just be the square root of 50 on top. On the bottom, you'd get 50. But then you'd have to simplify this anyway to 25. Uh, and that'd be 50. And then you would take the square root of 25, which is 5. You'd have 5 root 2 over 50. And then you'd have to reduce it to this. So it was a little bit more work. I don't know which way you want You see it. I don't care. As long as you end up getting to the right answer. Okay? Is there some more people I have to go? Oh, volleyball. That's right. I forgot. Good luck, girls. You're welcome. Um, who's tonight? Good luck. All right. Go spike some balls. All right. What can we do here? Want to reduce this fraction first, maybe? You can do that. If it's all under there, you can reduce first, which 72 divided by 9 is 8. Now multiply. Well, you're still going to have to do some simplifying the radical and stuff. But square root of 8, top and bottom, you'll get the square root of 8 over 8. And then you've got to break down 8 into 4 times 2. And so 2 comes out. We get 2 root 2 over 8, and then you can reduce. Now, I could have done it like I did that last problem, all right, the one with the 50. Okay, so this is the square root of 2 over 4 for your final answer on that. I could have done this problem differently, but you got to get there. All right, I want to jump to some of the ones with the square, the uh, variables, okay? We already said the square root of x squared would be x. The index is 2. So here's another way to look at it. How many times does 2 go into 2? Once. So 2 divided by 2 is what I said. Yeah, so 2 goes into 2, divides into 2 once, right? One time, so that's the power that comes out. Here, the answer to this would be x times y, right? Because the square root of x squared is x, the square root of y squared is y. But what happens when the powers are higher than 2? The index is 2. The square root of 36 is 6. I'm going to tell you the short way to do this is to divide the index into the number. If it's even, everything comes out. If it's odd, something's left. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. x squared comes out. 3 divided by 2 would go evenly how many times? Only once. So y to the first comes out. But there's still a y left under there. So you'd have to have the square root of y at the end. And I'll tell you why that is. Um, you're taking the square root of 36 is 6 squared. Then you got x to the second, x to the second, y to the second times y to the first. Only the twins get out, remember? Do you see how I'm bringing out a 6, an x, an x, and a y? And that would simplify to this. All right? And then a y was left. 
If it helps you to break it apart, you can do that to powers of two. So with that in mind, let's do a couple more back here. 48. 40 has, we can break that to 4 times 10. You've got an X, a Y to the fourth, and a Z to the fifth. I am not, I'm not going to break them up into this two, the powers of 2. I'm going to say, okay, bring out the square root of 4, which is 2. I can't take the square root of X. It's going to be stuck. So is a 10. But Y to the fourth, what would the square root of Y to the fourth be? 4 divided by 2 is 2. So why did the second comes out? Some z's can come out because you got a power of 5. 5 divided by 2 goes evenly twice. So you bring out a z to the second. But there's something underneath there still. Okay, now you don't have to write this 2 here, guys. I'm just trying to remind you of how I'm explaining it. Because it's not going to be the book won't write it there. All right, what was stuck under here? We didn't get to take the square root of 10. We didn't get to square, take the square root of x because we couldn't simplify that. And a z was also left. Okay. Why don't you try, um, do number 46. Okay, check it when you finish. What do you think? Anybody anybody need me explain that better? Or again? No? Okay, then do 47. Is that Y2? What's that Y2? I can't read it. It's to the 6th? So when you're dealing with the square root, do you realize the only thing that gets stuck underneath is when it's an odd power? Yes. Okay? Even powers, it all gets to come out. You just divide by 2. So what do you think? I forgot <laughs> to mention this too. These are just more for you to practice. What are you going to be looking for if it's this? Things that are to the power of 3. So, if you had the cube root of x to the third, then it would be x. The cube root of x squared, you can't simplify. Because it's not got a big enough power. Okay? So, it's the same if you increase the index, you got to increase the powers in here to get them out. Okay, anyway. There's a few of those um, on the assignment. But we'll discuss more about radicals tomorrow. I'm going to give you a little time to do some problems. Your assignment is the worksheet that you got. Um, oh, one more thing. What if I do? What do you think that answer is? <coughs> to the... Yep, that's it. Okay, so anything to a power. So don't let it bother you that it's something in parentheses. You're still going to do the same process. Divide the power by the index and let it come out. Okay? <coughs> Hello?